Happy Sunday, everyone. Today's snippet is brought to you by Miss Linda Cumberland. She's the double page layout queen. She's also been known to be the creating clusters queen. That's kind of hard to say. And this is a two-parter. So this one, she's going to talk a little bit about double pages and templates and then next week she will finish it up if you are a member and you want to watch the whole entire full hour and a half i believe it was go inside of the academy and go to the 2020 members only classes and you can also search for double page or um, two page spreads or linda and you will be able to find it there as well just click on the search button and type in double page hit that enter key and there it is. Enjoy the next few minutes. Bye for now. We create a canvas that measures 24 by 12. If I'm scrapping eight and a half by 11, then it would be 17 by 11 and so on. So that's pretty simple. We'll go ahead and get started. We're going to create our template and to do so, we're going to need to create a new file. We'll go to file, new, blank file or control N on your keyboard. When the new file dialog box opens, in the width, you're going to want to place the finished size of your project. In the height, it will be 12 because I'm scrapping a 12 by 12 layout. And the resolution always set at 300, that is um, print quality. We'll click OK. Control zero will expand my canvas area and I'm gonna move it right up here and I hope this enables you to see it a little bit better. We're gonna go ahead and flood the background um, of our layer with a color. To do that, you'll just click on the foreground uh, color chip and then I'm going to just select a light gray and say okay. Under draw, select your paint bucket tool or K on your keyboard and then click anywhere within your document to flood it with the color. We're going to go ahead and create our guidelines. This is going to help separate our pages and create the gutter space where the pages meet in the center. That is where your spine will be. So we'll go up here to view and all the way down, we're going to click on new guide. When the new guide dialog box opens under orientation, we want to make sure that it's set to vertical and in position, we're going to set our center line first and that will be 12 and then your line appears. We'll go back two more times to uh, create our gutter space and we'll go ahead back down to new guide and we'll place a guideline at 11 and three quarters. And then one more time, view new guide and we'll place it at 12 and a quarter. This gutter space is more of just a visual guide for us so that we're very careful not to place our elements or our important journaling or titling too close to the center because we don't want anything to fall into that gutter um, space and then be lost. And that's how we create our um, our template. Are there any questions? It's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, it's very, very clear. Um, now, Linda just said something and I answered it for her. Uh, she says, I noticed some start with a transparent background and then color it, set the background in white uh, when they start a file. Does it really matter which way you do it? If you start so, with a transparent rather than a Yes. rather than flooding it. I just yeah. flooded it so that you could see the guidelines a little bit better. Yeah, so it really doesn't matter. I mean, you can start it with white or you can start it with exactly. transparent and then flood it. Exactly, okay, you, cool. You can do without any background for this layout because we're not actually going to be using this gray for anything. It's just going to be, it just is showing my guidelines a little better. You can do transparent, you can do gray, white, or any color that you like. And for this double page layout, I'm going to be using papers and elements for my Just Beachy kit. And we'll create a traditional layout for our left side, which is a more basic beginner type layout. And then we'll use our custom shape tool to create a fun look for our layout on the right side. So let's go ahead and begin by opening our background papers for our left side. So we'll go to File, Open, or Control-O on your keyboard. And when your Windows Explorer opens, 
you're going to navigate to the folder that contains your files and that would be this one here for me and I'll go ahead and click on that and I'm going to select these three papers right here so I'm going to select my first paper hold down my control key select the next paper and my third paper with all three papers selected I will click open and all three of them will open for me at one time I'm going to click and drag my background paper, this cardstock, into my document, and I'm going to move it over to my left side. And I just want to make sure that the um, top and the bottom, the side and the center, that it covers all of those areas. We're going to use that again, so we'll go ahead and put that into our photo bin. I'm going to open up my next paper here, and I want to resize this paper, so I'll use Control Alt I to open the image size dialog box, or you can go to image, resize, and right over here in the other drop down menu, it'll say image size, click on that, and it will also open this image size dialog box. Under document size, I'm going to place nine, and it will already select nine for my height because I have constrained proportions selected, and I'll click OK. I'm going to click and drag that paper, I'm gonna move this down so I can grab it. I'm going to click and drag that paper into my layout and position it. And I want to give it a little bit of a tilt towards the center. And to do that, I'm going to simply bring my pointer up to the corner, or you can use it at the side. And if you notice, each time I hit those points, the arrow makes an arch and has a double head arrow. And then you just click and drag until you have it in the position that you want click on the green arrow, or just simply double click on your paper. We'll go ahead with our next paper and we're going to resize that. Control Alt I to open our image size dialog box. And I'm going to make this paper nine and a quarter and say, okay. We'll click and drag and put that into position as well. And I think I'm going to reposition these just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and name our layers. This is going to be our background. And we'll name this one Paper 1. And we'll name this paper Paper 2. I'm going to add a drop shadow to these two papers. So I'm going to go down to my styles which is located just below my layers palette. Click on that icon, and I'm going to use Snickerdoodle Designs Drop Shadows. I always use Snickerdoodle Designs Drop Shadows. I, I really love them. Um, Karen has created a set of shadow styles that can be applied to a number of different types of elements as well as papers. It covers a number of things. Let's look at some of them, a curly string, a flat string, a butterfly, um, foliage, different depths, distance, and sizes, and opacities for each of these. And I'm going to go ahead and select this paper too. For my bottom paper, I'll click on my, left, uh, my top paper, and I'll apply that same shadow. We'll go back to our layers, and while I'm on the top layer, I'm going to go in and I'm going to bring in, open up my frame, and my picture. Now this frame, as you see it, is has layers to it, but actually in the kit itself, it is just this frame here. All I've done is I've added a shadow to it. I placed a clipping mask underneath of it, and then I just simply duplicated my frame, and I turned it and rotated it to create a bit of a stacked frame. So we'll go ahead and click and drag and place that in our layout. And we'll close this. And then we'll bring in our, our young men here. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate that around again, just bringing my arrow close to the corner and then clicking and dragging. We'll double click to accept, accept that and we'll bring our layer Below our top frame, I'm going to name that pick, 
And then with my move tool, I'll go ahead and adjust it. And sometimes my move tool is a little draggy, so we can use our right and left arrows and our up and down arrows to move our picture. Once we have our picture set where we would like for it to be, we will want to clip it to the photo mask that is just below it that says clip pick here. To do that, we can use Control Alt G as a keyboard shortcut and clip it or unclip it. We could right click on our mouse, create clipping mask or release the clipping mask, or we can simply hold down our Alt key and with the layer selected that you want to clip, just drag down until you get the square and the downward arrow and then click on your mouse and that will clip it to the clipping mask. And the same procedure will also unclip it. We want to go ahead and link our picture to our frame. So we're going to select the top frame, hold down our shift key and select the bottom frame, which will select everything in between. We'll right click and then we'll simply link our layers. This will allow us to move this if we need to and not lose our picture.